you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and you have to commit. If you're not willing to commit to the shit work to find the success, you're not gonna be successful. I'm super excited to introduce my dear friend, Chef Chad White. Over the years, we've gotten to know you and celebrated with you at the opening of new restaurants and new ventures. To start with, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? How did you get started into becoming a restaurateur? I'm a chef and owner of Chad White Hospitality Group. We are a local restaurant group here in Spokane, Washington that consists of TT's Old Iron Brewery and Barbecue, High Tide Lobster Bar, and Zona Blanca. Our primary focus is around food, its culture, and our community. Really how I got started, I never wanted to be a chef. Like as a kid, I didn't think about being a chef ever. And since I was a child, I've always wanted to serve others, do things to make people smile. As a business owner, you learn that instant gratification really is about long-term building foundation and learning skills to make other people happy. So you didn't start out wanting to be a chef and starting and owning restaurants. What sparked your desire to cook and serve food and, and delight people from a culinary standpoint? Enjoy. I joined the Navy on 9-11. The only job that I qualified for that had an actual rating was to be what they called back then a mess specialist. I didn't think about being a chef. It's just that was the opportunity. As a kid, I was an artist. My grandmother was an artist. My great-grandmother was an artist. My mom said something that was really unique to me. I don't understand how you're not getting this. So let me explain it how I see it. And how I see it is, you put food on a plate. That plate is a canvas. Why don't you paint on that plate with food? Make that your canvas. And that was the light bulb that came on, right? That's fascinating. You've got this passion to serve and to delight people, be creative and create unique things. And in doing so, that led to relationships and partnerships where people really wanted to support and actually grow with you. So, Komoon's open. Mm -hmm. An opportunity to open a pizza restaurant. I do that. Everything is going good. I won Chef of the Year by Eater Magazine. I won Chef of the Year by San Diego Magazine. I won Best New Restaurant, Best Bar Program, all these different things, right? And I beat out Richard Blaze. <laughs> Look at the grin. Yeah. Pretty good, yeah. right? So I win all these awards, and I get an opportunity to go on Top Chef. And at first, I said no. And I don't say no. I said, no, I don't want to fail. I'm doing really well. I'm in my pocket. I want to continue to do what I'm doing and expand in this area. I don't think I need TV to do that. And I fought it and I fought it and I fought it. But we were not doing financially well at Komoon. And so there started to be turmoil. And I said, yes. That opportunity opened up more doors than I could ever imagine. But it closed the door. And it closed the door because I chose to take this opportunity, which took me away from my business for a period of time, and seven weeks away from a restaurant that's already financially struggling is like putting the nail in the yeah, coffin. Yeah, yeah. So I come back from the show, and my partners sit me down, they say, we're pulling the plug. And I'm destroyed. I don't have any money. The restaurant we just closed, I'm getting sued for. I had no business signing personal guarantees that right. I couldn't cover. Right. So I got sued. We open up Zona Blanca and I pay off my lawsuit and any debt that I had. And to paint you a picture, 400 square foot restaurant yeah. in the back of a dive bar next to a homeless shelter yeah. that then earned me chef of the year, three years running, and then we got nominated for James Beard Award. 
Well, you know what's fascinating about that is what you were able to accomplish out of that little tiny space. I see a lot of business owners getting ready to get ready to get ready, or they need to have everything just so, everything just perfect, right? You move into Spokane, you start Zona Blanca, which leads to a couple of high tide restaurants, which leads to an opportunity to do TTs. You just are getting that going, and then March 2020 hits, and everything's got to shut down. What the f what did you do? What was your mindset? How did you react to that? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, what am I going to do? Right. Because it was really easy to look at one project and go, all right, we're OK. We'll get through this. But then you look at, I've got four restaurants. Two of them I owe money on. We knew we had to find a way to continue to serve. We knew that we couldn't employ everyone. So we set up online ordering because we couldn't answer the phone fast enough. We minimized our processes and we maximized our efficiencies and all of the senior management went to work. We still paid our staff, but we went to work. Right. And the funny thing is, staff ended up making more money because we were able to do everything so fast. What advice would you give to someone who's contemplating you know, transitioning from being an employee and deciding that they want to start a business. What advice would you give? Start small. Yeah. We don't have to go to the moon today, right? You have to build businesses in a way that you know that you can support that business. So start with what you know that you can succeed at and become an expert in that. Right. And then when you master that, move on to the next thing. It's okay to go slow. Right. And the thing is, what do you call it? The, is it the compound effect? Right. Yeah. You build this, the next thing that you build is the same size, and now it's double. Right. And then you build that double, right? And all of a sudden you're way out there in a way that you didn't think that you could do. What I've always observed about you is there's a maxim in business growth. It's called can I constant and never ending improvement. And that's definitely you. I've never seen you coast and develop a concept and then, okay, now I'm done. What do the next three years look like for Chad White, for Chad White Hospitality Group? What's in the pipeline? I really am looking to get into more commercial real estate. So I'm looking at starting to open restaurants in buildings that I own. But the thing that I'm most excited about is looking at the members of my team who have it and investing in them further so they can grow and do their own thing. Because the, the, the proudest moment in my life has not been how many chips I have stacked in my bank account, but when I see a team member of mine go off and open their own restaurant and win an award and be involved in the community, that is 100% a representation of me providing the right kind of leadership for them to find success, that's value. You're really in the mode of now, you know, you're a celebrity chef, restaurateur, and now you're creating celebrities, and you're creating partnerships, similar to the experience that you had when people invested in you. So tell us, how does someone find Chad Wyatt? How do they find one of your properties, one of your restaurants? How do people find you? We have a website. Uh, for our hospitality group, it's www.cwhospitalitygrp.com. Uh, you can find all of our restaurants on that website, High Tide Lobster Bar, TT's Old Iron Brewery and Barbecue, Zona Blanca Ceviche Bar, and then our affiliates. Well, listen, thank you so much. This is really cool. Obviously, you know, I enjoy uh, any time that I get to spend with you. You know, primarily that's because of the common interests and the common values and, and the desire to grow and the desire to make a difference and an impact in the community. So I'm, I'm thrilled and honored that you'd take the time to do this. And I appreciate you sharing your experiences with our audience. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity.